Hi, welcome to Ladies of Another View. I'm back, and we have a couple new faces here today. I'm Patty, as usual. We have Jan, and we have April Lund. She is one of our, she, she was a guest once upon a time, and we liked her so much. She's on our sub list now. Mm -hmm. And there on the end is my very own son, Luke Armstrong. So um, he is here because he's got, had a rather interesting life. <laughs> <laughs> And which means I've had an interesting life raising him, <laughs> Mark, Mark and I. Um, just never ending. He is number two of ten children. And we're going to talk a little bit about, we're also in, the, in our last segment today, we're going to have Senator Jason Heidkamp, and he's going to talk about daylight saving time. And I think, I think that can be pretty controversial, right? Mm -hmm. When you start, we start messing with the time. I know Jan's ready. <laughs> she's, she's, she's got some opinions. So... Stick with us in our last segment. We'll be talking with him. And um, right now, we'll just kind of, we'll, we'll talk to Luke and I have a few pictures. And we're going to, um, he works in Guatemala for the Integral Heart Foundation. He is the outreach director. And um, he's been in Guatemala how many years? Since 2008. So I guess we're up on, is it 13 years now? Yeah. Wow, 13 years. You're like. It adds up, you know, one year at a time and. Seems like you were just 13 to me. <laughs> but he's with you always. That's being a mom and all. So, um, and we'll, uh, next segment, we'll also have um, Mick. Mick Quinn on, who's the founder of the foundation that you began with. You used to be his boss mm -hmm. at the Godshaw Project, and now he's your boss at the Integral Heart Foundation. So that's kind of interesting. And um, so let's first begin with you were a graduate of St. Mary's High School. Mm -hmm. And Represent NDSU. 04. <laughs> and NDSU. And then I went to NDSU. Yep, I did three years there. And then I did what I didn't know was my last semester until it was my last semester. I found out in Chile that I could fulfill my requirements for graduation. Um, so I graduated then in Chile on my semester ab abroad in Valparaiso, it was called. Because you wanted to challenge yourself and learn your really employ your Spanish that you were working on and um, so you took everything in Spanish your last semester. Yep, so I actually had put on the application that I had had eight semesters of Spanish even though I had only had six because you needed that to get into Chile, not knowing that's because the Spanish of Chile is very, very difficult. Um, it's almost like its own language. So I definitely struggled to know what was going on, but if you want to crash course in learning a language, um, birth by fire is a good way, or to date <laughs> someone that is speaking only that language. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess. So that happened too? Briefly, briefly, yeah. It didn't work out, sorry. It was, but it yeah. was helpful. It was very helpful, yeah. Uh, especially breaking up with her in, in my second language was very oh. useful <laughs> to learning. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, always, thunk it. you have to really figure out what you're saying and, and it's fast and intense you always thought your dad spoke fluent spanish until you until i started it. to learn <laughs> spanish and i'm like you this claim you've had our, our whole life is false but absolutely he knew, lot, he, he knew a lot of verbs and nouns and so and that he knows how to shout them loudly <laughs> Well, textbook too. and dialect are two different things, right? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. You know. Well, our family went to Texco, Mexico, and we were going down these little curvy roads where the van got stuck. We really needed help. And somebody came, and I just remember this confused expression on your face, and you're like, you know, Dad doesn't really know how to speak Spanish, and you just like, oh, excuse me, Dad. And then you explain. He does well, though. You know, you know at least he's well, putting yeah. himself out there. A lot of people speak fairly good Spanish or another language, but they're too nervous about making mistakes, so they don't go for it. So I, I applaud his going for it. And, you know, he, he did minor in, in college, right, so right. at one point he knew more. He read books, yeah, and it comes back to you, and he can communicate in that. And I think he can understand. So, he anyways, Mark's probably watching, and now we're going to be in trouble if we're talking about him. <laughs> That's why I um, went diplomatic and took it <laughs> another direction. And once you, you went to Chile, and then you never came home. Never came home. So what? Um, yeah. my guidance counselor emailed me in Chile to say, look, you just need one 400-level philosophy class to complete both of your majors in English and philosophy. And my first thought was, I have a guidance counselor? Where's he been all these three years? <laughs> And then my second thought was like, okay, well, Better I can, late than never. Yeah. It's not necessarily a reflection on the school. It could be Luke. When you could would be. have a Very track well, meet, be, yeah. I'd say, where's your track meet? I don't know, Mom. Just get I'm in not the bus. sure I'll find out when, when I get, get there. there. I just would get on the bus. You know, it's the so. same. It's just the same loop, wherever it is. <laughs> uh -oh. You run around. 
<laughs> so, um, okay, and so how did you go, where did you go after Chile? So, well, in Chile I realized, okay, I'm going to graduate ab abroad here. I have a ticket back to Fargo, North Dakota, but I'm done with college and it's winter. So <laughs> if I want to be a writer, like the most depressing thought I could think of was flying back to Fargo, moving into my parents' basement, opening my laptop and saying, oh, well, now I'm a writer. <laughs> so I did um, the most ir financially irresponsible thing I could think of. I took out an alternative student loan with the Goal Loan Program. Thank you, U.S. Bank. And I used that to fund what I was reading Into the Wild at the time. I'm not sure if you've read the book mm -hmm. or seen the movie. Yeah, doesn't the guy die at the end? So I took, oh, I didn't finish reading it yet. That's a mom thing. <laughs> How is that inspiration? <laughs> I took the wrong moral from the story and I decided, okay, I'm going to hitchhike from Chile to Alaska, travel overland. Um, and then I made it as far as Guatemala. And I had. Wait a minute. Okay. Pause. Paused. There was a little problem with you going through Colombia, mm -hmm. kidnap capital of the world. I have a yeah. cousin who uh, serves in the Green Berets, and he has a town, a village named after him, Higginsville. And I, and I said, hey, is this a safe thing for Luke to do? And he said, no, I would not be authorized to go through there. So I thought Luke would change his plans at that point, but he didn't. So that I doubled down, because I, I guess as a oh. writer, and I was endeavoring, my, my thought was I will volunteer along the way to Alaska, and then I'll just seamlessly settle into making a living as a writer, which, you know, 13 years later, I'm still making it as a writer, so I guess um, you know, making it is still endeavoring in the position to. Um, but what happened then is going through Colombia, these dangerous situations when you're a writer, you're like, well, even if something bad happens, as long as I survive to tell the tale, I have a great story to tell. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> That's Anything a, other than death, right? That's yeah. a whole something different way to look about. at a career. Oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> Um, and so you did end up in Guatemala. So uh, traveling through Guatemala, I thought I'd be, you know, volunteering for a couple months at the Godshell Project because I had actually gone to Guatemala when I was 13 and then again when I was 14 on a two-week service building trip that the Godshell Project was doing, um, this charity that was founded by Pat Atkinson, who's from Bismarck. And he convinced me to stay for a year to volunteer. And on my 12th day, the director of 300 employees quit and then on my 13th day, I found myself at the age of 22 with two liberal arts degrees under my belt, directing one of the largest charities in Guatemala. I was the program awesome. director, and Mark and I had visited. We, you took us out to the garbage dump where you get families mm -hmm. out of there and into homes. Um, there was a nutrition center. He was actually on 2020. Who interviewed you? Christian Amanpour. Yeah. yeah. So he was on 2020 talking about the nutrition center that and, he helped And you start. saw you saw some of the the victims of child labor that we were working to get out of the garbage dump at the time, and we we did. We um, you know I'm in touch. I actually just messaged one today because she needs um, some finances to get some paperwork so that she can apply for jobs now that the COVID is that Maria is kind of um, Carmen, her sister. Carmen, uh, I think we have her picture. We'll have it up later yep. in the show. So and she was taken out of the garbage dump. And she was in the garbage dump, and then when she's they live at the school. garbage dump. They mm -hmm. build these little plastic homes, and they actually live there. And then they recycle things. I was going to ask things. for ex yeah. explanation. Yes, when you yes. find them in a garbage dump, what are you talking yeah. about? Yep, they actually work and live right along the fringes of the garbage dump. So it's pretty pretty wow. dramatic. Um, yeah. So. So that's how Luke ended up in Guatemala, and he eventually worked, went to work for another program, the Integral Heart Foundation. So we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk with Mick Quinn. He's going to join us via Zoom, and he's going to talk about the Integral Heart Foundation and the kind of families and children that they help there. Right after these messages on Ladies of Another View on Beck. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. 
Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. Hop in the rig and go down the road with me. We'll cover local and national stories that impact you. What happens with national debt? Does anybody even care anymore? Do you think Governor Burgum truly understands the legislative process? You know, I think he's got a better understanding now than he did two years ago. Why in the world are we having a, a conversation about being anti-vaccination? Down the road with Joel Heitkamp weekdays at 530 Central on Beck News and online at beck.news. Pub 21, your one stop for fun, drinks, and food. Our spacious facility provides COVID-safe fun for you and all your friends. With nightly bingo and specials, you can be sure there's something to do for everyone. If you're staying in for the night, we've got you covered just across the way with Pub 21 Liquor. We have a wide variety of options, from wine to whiskey and everything in between. Stop in today at 1014 South 12th Street in Bismarck to see what all the buzz is about. You won't be disappointed. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back. And we talked last segment with Luke Armstrong, and the last, same last name is no coincidence. He is my son, the second of 10 children, uh, one of eight boys. So we had a lively, <laughs> lively years at our house. And he was explaining how he ended up in Guatemala and working for the Integral Heart Foundation now. We are going to be joined by the co-founder and director of the Integral Heart Foundation, Mick Quinn, originally from Ireland. Welcome to the show, Mick. Hi, guys. Thank you very much. It's a, a pleasure to be on. I hope you can hear me OK. We yes, can. Sir. Perfectly. Great, great. It, looks, great. it looks like you're having warm weather there. It's about 26 uh, centigrade today, Nor normal for this time of year. About 70 Fahrenheit. I was like, wait, what's that mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, Nobody it's, in America knows what's that We're North Dakotans. We don't know what you're talking we're about. We know boiling's Canada. 100, freezing <laughs> zero. That's Speaking it. Speaking English. <laughs> we, we never learned. Yeah, we were going to like 30 years ago, and right? it just never happened. But That's true. Um, yeah, we're catching so, up. <laughs> so share with us, what do you do at the Integral Heart Foundation? Well, we have a school in Antigua, Guatemala, which is about 45 minutes from where I am right now. And we have 83 children there between the ages of uh, three and 12 years old. And we offer them, we do classes in English, Spanish. We have uh, homework help, uh, artwork. And also we have a, a visiting psychologist and also the director of the local Guatemalan human rights organization. She visits us quite on a regular basis to give classes to the kids. Now that's in normal times. In these times, what we're doing is we are um, delivering homework to all 83 of the kids on a weekly basis, delivering, picking up. And we're also delivering uh, food baskets to uh, each of the families of those 83 kids. And that's because of COVID, correct? That's because the schools are still closed. Everything else is pretty much open, but the schools and universities are still closed. We don't know why, but they still are. And you are really giving them a top-notch education, aren't you? This is not just, you know, teach them to read and write type thing. No. These, our students also go to school, well, in, again, in normal times. Uh, they go to public school, but public school here in Guatemala only operates on a half day basis, meaning in the morning or in the afternoons, depending on how old you are. So basically every child in Guatemala has a half day off every day. So we're a classic um, NGO, non-governmental organization, nonprofit 
that offers to fill up that time in the afternoon for the kids so that they're not running around to the streets or getting in trouble with gangs or drugs or anything like that. So it's it, that, that's the type of program that, that we offer here in, in Guatemala. And well, what kind of kids do you look for to enroll in your program? Um, these are kids that they're, well, Antigua is a Spanish uh, at, uh, UNESCO certified city. It's very pretty, cobblestone streets, uh, no traffic lights. It's full of foreigners. It's quite expensive. But all around Antigua in the mountains are these really small, very poor villages where children are born into generational poverty. So our goal is, our primary goal is to give them a base a stable base where they feel loved, protected, and safe. And secondly, we feed them. Like for instance, we did a study about three years ago over the Christmas holidays, which here are about two months long. Uh, the kids lost on average between five to seven pounds. Now this, oh I'm talking about a four-year-old losing wow. five to seven, yeah. So nutrition is, is our, one of our, our uh, primary drives. Then it's education, but the, the overarching aspect of our work is love it's 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 giving these kids the sense that that they are loved that there is that stability is possible Just where they grow up in these villages it's it's really born into generation poverty there's no way they can get out of it without extra extra help and that's what we provide at, at the integral heart school so i saw on your website that critical thinking is one of the primary teachings of the school um, you know, here in America, it's more like critical race theory is taught. Um, so, so it's something that, you know, you need to teach us how to teach because that's something that every family should teach their children. But you need to do it a different way, if I understand it right, so that you don't get pushback from the families or, you know, what, what prompted you to go that direction? Um, well, my, my wife and I, Deborah, she, we, we co-founded the organization back in 2011. And the reason that we founded our own school, we, we didn't move to Guatemala with the intention of opening a, non, a nonprofit. That wasn't our plan. We just kind of got led that way. We had been teaching a critical thinking course at the organization that Luke actually managed, a very big uh, NGO. We were teaching kids about values and we were teaching kids as they say in critical thinking, it's not, it's not what to think, it's how to think. So we were using structures from integral theory, from a spiral dynamics. These are pretty, um, let's say, tried and trusted techniques of developing a, a critical sense that you can understand the world around you without being angry or intimidated by it, and to understand how you can get ahead in the world where you, know, where you have a tremendous amount of... Um, of uh, opposition, let me say, from especially growing up in generational poverty. So those structures continue um, as part of the classes here in, at, the, at the school. Can I um, show a couple pictures? We, Please. So people can get an idea. Um, put a, so, okay, Luke, what is this? You can tell us. So this is a garbage dump outside of a place called Ciudad Vieja. Um, and that's a mother who is, you know, renting out her children to work scavenging recyclables from this dump. Um, and I think she was being paid 40 cents a day. And her kids are probably earning like a dollar a day um, that somebody else is getting who's like in charge. You know, we called him Pedro, the mayor of the garbage dump. Okay. And let's see the other pictures too. Okay. This is... So my Mark. husband, Mark, was there giving a talk on Our Lady of Guadalupe. And um, they were just gathered to listen, right? Mm -hmm. He had come to visit you with a couple of the So those are the kids boys. in the school. That's me down there in Guatemala um, with a big group of them. Looks like they're about 9 and 10-year-olds. OK. All right. And this is, this is like what the program ultimately does. So this is yeah, um, a student after. who was in the garbage dump as an 8-year-old. And this is her, she's just graduated high school. So That's so awesome. amazing. Being a 10-year organization, I think, Mickey, you'd agree that um, you know, we know this system works at this point yeah. because we've seen kids that just didn't have any chance of, of graduating high school, you know, getting, living the dreams that they wanted to instead of the life that they were forced to live. So you know, it really takes 10 years. And like Mick said, it's that 
even if their parents are neglectful, unstable in their lives, um, if they have one presence, one entity, one person that is consistent and provides consistent love, encouragement, that's enough to break the chains of generational poverty, which, you know, it's not a lack of financial resources. That's a symptom of a lack of emotional resources, I think I would say. Mick, we have 30 seconds. This went by so quickly. What would you like to leave us with? What thoughts of how you can well, make a difference? <clears throat> for, first of all, I would like to thank you for, for allowing us this audience. Um, it's, it's been wonderful to, um, to be on and to also show you a little glimpse of Guatemala in the background. Um, we're, we're about half of our donations come from regular monthly donors and the rest we have to find through various funding drives. So if anyone that's listening would like to become a monthly donor, and that can start as low as $10 a month, it's actually quite, and that, that we, can, we can do some damage with. So 10, we have okay. monthly donors starting at 10 all the way up. So, so thank you very much. So that's a way much, that we can be a part Patty. of it. And we'll, we'll give people more information on that in the next segment Excellent. too. So they can, thank you, Mick, for joining us. Thank you. Go Good guys. See you, Mick. See you on the other <laughs> side soon. Yeah. All right, Luke, bye. Okay, bye. and we'll be right back with Ladies of Another View on Beck. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. Indoor football is back in Bismarck. Bucks football season is right around the corner. Grab a friend or family member for a night of action-packed, hard-hitting entertainment. The Bucks open at the Bismarck Event Center May 8th as they take on the Massachusetts Pirates. Catch the sweetest seats in the house right on the sidelines with VIP service at a Bucks turf table. Available now for single-game purchases. Secure your tickets today by calling 701-595-0771. Bucks football, half the field and double the fun. At Beck Communications, we've been planning for your future. Over the past decade, we've placed nearly 200,000 miles of dedicated fiber optics in the ground. Enough fiber optic strands to circle the world eight times. Taking no shortcuts, we connected every home and business in our service area with dedicated fiber optics. It's your personal, unrestricted, unthrottled connection to the world. Best of all, this dedicated fiber means you do not share your connection. We call this intimate dedicated connection Beck Fiber. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream sheets. When you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Ever been in a cave before? It's our first time. It's all right. Where are you going? Oh. See you at the car! But how will we... The car! Your offer has been accepted. Ever bought a house before? It's our first time. All right. Where are you going? I'll see you at the closing. But how will we... The closing! News brings you real people and real news. Every weekday on KNDB, KNDM, and KRDK. Start your evening with the Dr. Duke Show at 4. Take a fresh look at current events with ladies of another view at 4.30. Go down the road with Joel at 5.30. Watch No Apologies with Becker at 9. Cap off your night with No Filter with Debbie at 10. Beck News. Real people, real news. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back, and we just said goodbye to Mick Quinn, who is the co-founder of the Integral Heart Foundation, and we'll have that information up later, later on in the show if you want to contribute or just take a look at their website and see the kind of work that they do. So I feel like there used to be a show a long time ago, even before my time, This Is Your Life, and I, I feel like... Luke, this is your, <laughs> this is your life. Um, oh, here we go. Integral Heart Foundation is up on the screen. Yeah. 
you can take a look at that and learn more about the program. And if you want to get involved, there's a lot of ways you can do that. And um, so Luke is a writer. You have published a couple books. And um, maybe we can even put those up on the screen, if not now. That must run in the family. Yeah. I think. You think so? Because <laughs> I'm a writer, yep. So he's done some writing. Well, those will pop up later on the screen because I also have some pictures of some of the countries he's been to. He thinks he's been to about 40. You probably haven't done it. I think I, I'm over 40 now. I haven't done a, a formal um, accounting of it, but a formal audit, but yeah, around 40. And one of your books, it's my favorite book of yours, is The Nomad's Nomad that talks a lot about your travels. It's a, This is my favorite book of yours. And is it available in town? I know it used to be at Steep Me a Cup. It could be at Steep Me. It could be at um, Rhythm Records. It's also on Amazon.com if you just search can my am, name. Can I go to Amazon? Armstrong. I think it comes up more readily than if you search the title of it. It's search very, those places in Bismarck first. Yes, yes, always definitely. check Bismarck always first. Check um, it's very entertaining because you talk about being in Kenya. But you talk about, like, you don't just visit these places. You live with them. As a matter of fact, when he went to Iceland, he was there for a couple months, he started a band. <laughs> Loki and the Fashion Bandits, we were called. We had three shows and a few less fans. <laughs> Collected a few people and said, hey, you okay. want to be in a band? He found some entertainers, and they did a few performances. And um, we actually have a That's picture of, of you in Iceland. Um, there's Iceland. Oh, Iceland yeah. Beautiful. Breathtaking. Love it. Colder than North Dakota, right? It doesn't get as cold. I was trying to explain the concept of below zero to Icelanders, because they don't get really below 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm like, you guys think you know cold? You don't know cold. I'm from North Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> right? The Icelanders the are a that. sham. <laughs> and here is oh, your, top of the this world. is his home. So I Guatemala. built this, yeah. I built them. Um, Three cabins, and then this is the main building. We actually have a roof over now. This is our, um, you know, yoga deck. Um, we use it for a lot of other things. Um, so now I have um, a retreat center. I do writers' retreats. I do meditation retreats down there. And there, and there was a volcano back there too. He lives on a lake in <laughs> a volcano. You see five volcanoes. You can see fuego erupting. Uh, I see a volcano erupt almost every day. Just when I open my eyes. Um, Wow. It's often erupting. And I actually was delayed three days in my, my flight coming back here. You know, you guys have weather in the winter. Well, our vo volcano, Pacaya, was erupting, and there was the volcanic ash. The winds changed, and it was flying through the airport. So I had oh. to wait three days just for the volcano to settle down before I could fly out. <laughs> right. I had read that. Um, and here is Iceland. That's a whale, the right? Humpback whale. And these humpback whales, you know, they, they travel all the way to South Africa, and they just come during a certain season up in Iceland. And there's another, okay, there you are. There I am. <laughs> That's that, what's left of the band, or <laughs> what? Yeah. I think that was pre the formation of the band, so I'm still solo there. Okay. <laughs> well, that could have been an album cover, but I guess uh, exactly. it never was. And here you are in Kenya. That's our oldest from Kenya. Um, That's Kelvin. He's a doctor now. If you ever get okay. anesthesia in Bismarck, odds are this could be your doctor. <laughs> and that's Tyler, our other son. He and Luke were always on adventures. We used to call them Lewis and Clark. So is that number one three. and number two? Oh, number two, two and three? And number three. And, and then Calvin and uh, Tyler are the same age. They went to St. Mary's So three together. and a half because he was adopted into an age bracket. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tyler used to call him uh, my brother from the other color mother. So okay. there's um, the Dalai Lama. You were, you... And when was that? So this is 2018. Um, and something he said that I, I can bring back full circle to the, the work in the charity world is there's something that really stuck with me is he said, you know, he talked about you know, in the Western world, the, how much antidepressants we're taking, that we have more material comfort and luxury than really anyone's ever had, ever. And yet, like, something like 20% of Americans have it so bad that they've asked their doctor to take a pill to make them feel better up here. So he mm -hmm. said it's when people don't have someone to care for or to serve that they really sink into their own personal misery which sort of was this aha moment, because I already saw that this was happening. You know, I would, you know, essentially go around my, my fundraising begging tour every year in, in the U.S., and people would be thanking me when they signed up to sponsor a child. And I'm like, well, if they're thanking me, I'm thanking them. The kids are thanking us. This is a pretty cool thing that's happening, Absolutely. and everyone's grateful. And I realized that that's, there's a whole other side of the work um, that as the outreach director was my, you know, responsibility to do, which is connect people from these affluent countries to the needs of children in Guatemala, and that creates meaning for them. You know, their lives have instant meaning 
because they know that you know we're very grassroots, so we don't have a large funding source, nor do we want a large funding source, because we believe the strongest funding source is a committed network of people that know where their money's going, that can see almost daily, you know, from what we're sharing on social media, what's happening to these kids in these situations, and that connection is, I think, very potent for people to have in their lives, so that they, you know, they maybe don't sink as far in their own personal misery. Because another thing that the Dalai Lama is would say is that all the suffering and misery in the world comes from two things: not seeing reality as it is and this self-grasping, like this inflated eye concept, so that, yeah, when everything is about you, um, it's very easy to sink into misery, but if your life is dedicated in service to others or to ideals or, you know, to, to something higher than your small concept of self, then everything you do has meaning to it, you know, and... Which and, is the Christian concept mm -hmm. of living, which Luke was just always a natural at, that he's the kid at Christmas time I don't know if you remember, Luke, but um, we were collecting toys to give to the poor. I mentioned this once. And you were giving away some of the toys you were using. I'm like, Luke, you still use that stuff. And you go like, Mom, why would I just give the poor my junk? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there you go. yeah, good point. OK, <laughs> you know. Um, but you always kind of had that bent. You love serving the poor, and you love writing. And I'm so glad that you've been able to do both. And obviously, you love traveling. What, what is your favorite place you've ever been to? Well, Guatemala is where I live, so that has its own favoriteness to it. Definitely India. India was this another amazing world. Nepal. You know, just seeing that in, in Southeast Asia, the devotion that people have um, to service, you know, in general. Um, everyone has, you know, their own little altar in their home, and, and they're, very, they're very devout. So this, this has become, that was very inspiring for me to see. So I'd say India will just to not drag out. <laughs> One of my yeah. favorite stories is when you, it's in the Nomad's Nomad, is when you went to, I think it was England, London, uh -huh. and in, this, in the airport you yeah. had an idea. What was it? So um, this is the first story of my book, The Nomad's Nomad, and, and it helps answer the question of, you know, even if you're broke, you can still travel. I was broke for many years on the road. People would ask, how can you afford to travel like this? I'd say, I can't afford not to. Like, I'm not caught in car payments, a mortgage, internet bill, cable bill, any of these things. So I had heard a British guy complaining a couple months ago that the prices of cigarettes in London, and I wasn't a smoker, was like 10 pounds, like $12. And then I saw, huh, in duty free at the Guatemalan airport, you can get cartons of cigarettes for like $12, like a dollar a pack. So I bought five cartons of cigarettes, sold them. I only had 40 hours in London. I just went to pubs and sold them and paid for my ticket to Europe and back just from that move. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Entrepreneur. There you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, it's so that's something you can learn from moment. the U.S. <laughs> that's never crazy. I had moment. a nephew that had done something similar, but it was more of an adventure to see the world. Mm -hmm. So he went to different families and stayed with them and helped work whatever job that they worked mm -hmm. in order for him to be able to stay with them and learn the culture, oh, so meet cool. the people. Um, Did he put that anywhere online or? Chronologically. He, he did. He had uh, a lot of it. He posted on his Facebook page. He's back in the States now. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, what an adventure to get to see where they go. Um, for those of us that haven't traveled overseas, that's pretty cool. Yeah, some of us like to stay home and just hear about what other people are doing, and that's not all bad either. <laughs> or worry about them. <laughs> I kind of stopped worrying. He's more careful. We don't have time to get into some of these uh, <laughs> harrowing stories, but... Um, I th I, one of the funny things was in Kenya when you and Tyler were taking pictures. Oh, but anyways, we can't get into that because we actually are at the you end You read here. about it, though. Check Thank out you. the Nomad's Nomad. Thank you, Luke, for, for coming on the show today and sharing a little bit about your yeah, life. Thank you for having me. Thank you so Beautiful much. To be here. Coming up, we have Senator Jason Heitkamp. We're going to talk about daylight saving time right after these messages with Ladies of Another View on Beck. Today's households have more digital devices than ever before. More links to family, business, education, and entertainment. Beck Communications spent over 10 years building North Dakota's fastest fiber optic internet service. Beck Lightband Internet, outpacing speeds in large cities nationwide. Lightband Internet handles all your digital needs without throttling your connection to the world. Beck Communications, valuable digital connections in rural North Dakota. 
Since opening in Hebron in 1940, Dakota Community Bank and Trust has been your hometown bank. Our mission has been to provide modern banking convenience with old-fashioned hometown service. We've grown with the communities we serve. Through year-round events, countless sponsorships, and nearly 7,000 hours of volunteering each year. Learn more about our 80-year history at dakotacommunitybank.com. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. My Giza sheets also include full 21 inch wide pillowcases that will fit over any pillow and deep pocket sheets that will fit over any mattress. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets. Giza Dream Sheets are available in a variety of colors. Use your promo code and for a limited time, when you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back. And we have a new face with us now, <laughs> Senator Jason Heitkamp. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Well, thank you very much for inviting me on. I really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate your last minute acceptance because I just called you yesterday evening. Yeah. Wasn't early either. <laughs> I've, I've, I've only been on TV once. It was a debate years ago when I was running for county commissioner. Okay. And they ran it on the closed circuit TV in Wapaton. If I can say Wapaton, <laughs> and they ran it on 1450 radio, and it was so popular that they ran it again on the radio. Oh wow! wow. If That's you can awesome. imagine, so I mean, they had they had such a large listening audience on the radio for this debate, and so I thought well, that was pretty cool. Well, this could be a very popular segment then, because we may have another debate coming up here. <laughs> awesome. We're going to talk about daylight savings yeah. time, and there are a lot of strong opinions when it comes to time whether you want to switch, whether you, if you do want to fall back, do you want to stick with what you have. And you have introduced a bill that would make daylight saving times permanent in North Dakota, right? Can you explain that to us? Okay, I, I will give you the short version. I travel all around the state uh, a lot because my girlfriend lives up in Botano and, and things like that. And so wherever I go, people like in Antler, North Dakota, when they find out who I, that I'm a senator, they say, we got to do something about daylight savings time. And it's, it's amazing how popular it is. And so I introduced a bill in the Senate, and it failed on the first day. Uh, I put amendments on it that said that we will not institute it until Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana institute it first. I want people to know, though, when you introduced a bill, it mm -hmm. was that it would be permanent, the daylight saving time yep. it would goes be permanent, to what they right? call summertime. Okay. So if you're wondering when, it's, it would be summertime, and then in the fall it goes back to standard time. So, but in the House they had introduced a bill that would put us on standard time 100% of the time, and that's not what people want. So um, that bill was ended, and my bill was still alive, and with the amendment the next day we re-voted on it again, and it passed and went to the House where they immediately killed it. 
Now, I want to make sure I'm clear. You're talking about daylight saving time uh -huh. being year round, right? Yep. Okay, I just want to make yep. sure we're. So, anyway, my bill was 2201. Okay. Well, at the same time, they introduced 1371. So, this is not my bill, but it is the same exact bill that mine was. And it came out a little bit later. And so, it passed the House with no amendments, which was really surprising because in the Senate, I mean, no one on the east side for senators and no one in the western part for senators were going to allow this to happen unless that amendment was on it, that we would not switch until Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana switch. But in the House, there was no debate. I mean, it was just like they passed it. They so, passed surprising. it by quite a wide margin, too, didn't they? Yeah, 39 they, to 8? Yeah. Well, I mean, that would be the Senate. The Senate passed yeah, it 39 yeah, to 8. Yeah, because okay. there's 97 House members. But that's pretty amazing. Yeah. So but anyway, um, it, it's funny because this bill then came to my subcommittee, which is oh. kind of weird. And then I said to the uh, representative, I said, do you mind if we put these amendments on so it will pass the Senate? And he said, no, I don't want those amendments on it. And so now this is where the fight is at because we put the amendments on it. It passed the Senate beautifully. And now we're in conference committee, and they're refusing to accept the conference committee report because they're saying that we don't want Minnesota to dictate to us what's going on, but Minnesota's not involved because the thing is, it's the senators from the eastern part and the senators from the western part. There's no Minnesota involved. There's no South Dakota involved. There's no Montana involved. We just have, like, for example, the Professional Firefighters Association was against the bill with no amendments. When we put the amendments on, they were for it. Because when they cross that bridge, they want to know what time it is. And they don't want it to change by an hour. And so our fight is to get the word out that we are not being dictated to by Minnesota. We are following what our constituents and what our senators want to do. And the thing about this bill also you got to remember is there's a lot of states that are passing this bill and it still has to be changed at the federal level to allow daylight savings time. Because the only thing that can be allowed right now is if you would switch to standard time 100% of the time. You can do that. Like Arizona has done. Correct. Okay. But the majority of people, and, and it's funny, I had more emails from young women with children. I never imagined that that would be the biggest volume of people that wanted this. But they want this because they want to spend time with their kids later in the day. So, the, I mean, this is a cool bill because you think you know who wants to do it, and then you find out, no, it's actually this group of people that's more excited about it than the other group. And that surprises me greatly because mm -hmm. children are the ones that struggle so much with the time changes. Mm -hmm. You know, their internal biological circadian rhythm, their clock mm -hmm. just gets all messed up, and the parents struggle to get yeah. them to go to bed on time, mm -hmm. to get them up in the morning. It, yeah. it, so I would have thought that that would have been the last group. Well, but I think. But Jan, that but they have to switch. They have to switch their kids' time clock back and forth. Right. I have grandchildren, yes. so and you have grandchildren, so it's like okay, we got to try to get ready because now their whole sleep schedule is thrown off. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. and that's um, not good for you health wise. Right. right. But he's saying if we stick with daylight saving time yes. year round, then mm -hmm. you're not going back and forth all the time. And the beauty of this bill with the amendment also is. They said on July 1st is when it would take effect. So we would, you know, whenever the federal government passes it, whenever the states pass it, it'll be on July 1st because then we'll already be on summertime. So that'll be, I mean, there won't be any extra special time change. But even if we pass it, it wouldn't go in effect until the other states pass it, our surrounding states as correct. well, is that correct? Correct. So technically Minnesota is dictating us or the well, other states are because it, even if we pass it, it wouldn't matter until well, they do, correct? Well, what I'm saying though is actually the people are saying that they will not allow this bill until they know that they can drive over that bridge and it's the same time on the other side. Well, sure, because right? you've got those connecting cities like right. Fargo, Moorhead, and Grand East Forks, and East West. Grand Forks, yeah. Wapton, yeah. Breckenridge. Sure. But and the other thing too is Minnesota is working on this bill already. South Dakota ran out of time, but they meet every year. Okay. And Montana is working on this bill also. And the funny part was, I don't know how long I have, but this is a beautiful story. Um, we were in Shields one day, me and my daughter, because we had to get out. And so, we had our masks on and 
we saw this guy in Shields, okay, and he had old jeans on, he had old shoes, he had a goose down jacket with a big oil spot right here. <laughs> But over the top of the mask, anything above the mask was a million dollar haircut. Oh, okay? Wow. And it was John Hoven. And I knew it was John Hoven. Okay? I knew it was Senator John Hoven from the time I looked at him. And, and he says, you got that daylight savings time bill, don't you? And I said, yeah. And he said, you know, Rubio, he's coming up to me, Senator Rubio from Florida. And he's like, he's coming up to me and he's saying, it's time to get this thing done. You know? And so... You know, I know what you're saying, but the federal government is on it. Minnesota's on it. South Dakota has tabled it, and they meet every year, so they're going to take it up right away when they get back. And then Montana also. And what's the biggest advantage for us as North Dakotans by passing this bill? Well, I think one thing, uh, like I said, I spend a lot of time up in Botno, and up there, it gets dark, you know, early. And the weird part is I have a camera system at my farm, so when I get up in the morning, I look at my farm and the sun is up, but in Botano the sun is not up. And okay. so there would be an advantage in the summer if you want to do a bonfire or something like that. Uh, there's an advantage in the winter time because when I drove bus, you know, like in the morning, if the weather's bad, they're going to call school off for like two hours or something like that. So to me and to the other people that I've talked to, the morning doesn't really matter so much. It's the afternoon when you're committing that bus to taking the kids home and now you have that extra hour to take them home. Right. You know, um, yeah. do you, would you like to stay for one more segment? I'd love to. I, I did have a little to. something planned, but we'll, yeah. we'll talk a little bit more. We're not quite done, so we'll be yeah. right back. Yeah, I'd love to. We'll be right back with Ladies of Another View on Beck. Yeah. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Deciding how to promote your business can be hard. Visit the professionals at Dakota Promotions and Printing and let them help you through your struggle. Dakota Promotions provides promotional items and apparel from corporate gifts to team shirts and everything in between. With quick turnaround times and friendly service, they are your best choice. And best yet, you're shopping local. Visit them online at dakotapromo.com or stop in their showroom at 320 West Main in Mandan. Dakota Promotions, delivering promotions just for you. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water. The key ingredient to making our signature New York style pizza. We also feature Heroes with the region's only Hero meat spit. Plus, Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14 inch or our special giant 20 inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York to go, we deliver for you. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Arrow Service Team does it all. Indoor football is back in Bismarck. Bucks football season is right around the corner. Grab a friend or family member for a night of action-packed, hard-hitting entertainment. The Bucks open at the Bismarck Event Center May 8th as they take on the Massachusetts Pirates. Catch the sweetest seats in the house right on the sidelines with VIP service at a Bucks turf table. Available now for single-game purchases. Secure your tickets today by calling 701-595-0771. Bucks football, half the field and double the fun. I'm Rick Becker from No Apologies. Welcome to your After Hours Oasis of Sanity. How can, how can these people not see that they're just clowns? Ads. We help simplify and educate you on things going on in the legislature and around the country. Asking the hard-hitting questions. But also having Flea Stack and Sid and Marty Croft stuff, and we've talked about that sometimes. <laughs> it's bad. Watch us weeknights at 9 Central on Beck News and online at beck.news.
Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back, and we are still here with Senator Jason Heidkamp, who's been so gracious to stay, because we are talking about time, and we just had a short, too, too short of a period <laughs> of time to talk about it. We're not done yet. Um, we were talking about the bill that was has been introduced, passed by a wide margin in the House, and now it's in the Senate, right, yep. to decide whether we are going to permanently be on daylight savings time, um, because... I think it's emotional for a lot of people. They're attached yeah. to their time zone, but we're already switching half the year. We're half mm -hmm. here, half there. Um, has it, there ever been any talk about one time zone in North Dakota? There has uh, in the past. I believe they've tried this uh, bill in three different sessions, and they tried to change the state to one total time zone. But you know, like I said, it comes back to. Uh, how the people in Western North Dakota feel, because they feel very strongly about being able to be in a certain time zone, and they and they don't want to be in the same time zone because it really affects them going into Montana, and a lot of the people that are in Western North Dakota are going into Montana, so it affects them quite a bit. Well, the daylight thing, you know, it's for every so many miles you lose or gain a, a minute of daylight. Mm -hmm. yep. So you know, we're a, we're a wide state. You yep. know, the, it's. It makes sense that it would be more than one time yeah. zone. And like I said, you know, Botano is kind of like right north of Rugby. And so just in case your viewers don't know, but, you know, I said when I get up in the morning, it's dark in Botano, it's light in Richland County. So, I mean, just imagine, that's only like half the state. So right, that's, a, yeah. that's a big it difference. It does make a big difference. You know, I'll FaceTime sometimes with my daughter, Teresa, who lives in Sleepy Eye, Minnesota. And uh, just recently, uh, maybe a week or two ago, we were FaceTiming and it was dark out her window, but we still had daylight out our window. Yeah. And I said, well, you guys are nighttime and we're still daytime over here. Yeah. It is funny, that, you know, it's the same time zone. But it's yeah. just the opposite in the morning. And you know, I do right. the same thing okay. with my family there in Minnesota and it's daylight there and it's still dark out here. I'm looking at stars and the moon and they're already up with the chickens. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I would love just to not have to change my clock. Honestly, and you could get a nice rhythm. You talked about circadian rhythms earlier, like um, especially as athletic and training and our kids and really just setting a routine. I think that would be fabulous, personally. Yeah. And then you don't ever have to worry about it. I think that'd be great. Well, then you don't have to teach your husband how to change the clock in the vehicle. <laughs> oh Sorry, Tommy. I just leave oh, it yeah. to next time. <laughs> how many of us, like, oh, yeah, I still got to change that, and then you forget. It's just like, no, I, it, it'll it. be right in six months from now. So just, yeah, leave, I just right. leave it. I just leave it. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and you're not sure what the time is where you go places. Like, did you change a clock? That doesn't seem right. Or how many people go to church I, late? Well, on. I, I only of, have one clock in my house, and that's my cell phone. Yeah, but even this time with the daylight savings time, I got caught in my vehicle because, you know, I'm getting ready and stuff like that. And I get my vehicle, it's like, what's going on? I'm like an hour <laughs> off. So it, 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 it even caught me. Yeah. So. Okay, so let's look at the detractors of this idea. Mm -hmm. I could see where some people say, you know, I kind of like it being dark in the winter. I'm in my hibernation stage mm -hmm. and I don't want all this daylight. Do you hear anybody talk like that? You know, there's a lot of talk about we got to get our sunlight. Um, but, you know, like I said, I think you can get just as much sunlight in the summer or uh, in later day as you can in the morning. And for the most part, people are getting ready and it's dark out. It, I don't think it really matters in the morning. But I guess you would get more sunlight than in the winter time hmm. because you have a little hour people that are getting off work. Yeah. You have a little bit more daylight. What I hate yeah. the most about winter is not 30 below here. It's dark when I'm getting ready for work and go to work and it's dark when I get off work yeah and that just yeah. I don't that think that's very that fun. won't change <laughs> no. sorry it won't well, change I don't know with daylight saving time you will get a little bit more it'll, it'll just shift one way or the other so you'll have yeah. dark more at one end or the other if one yeah. could be a little light that would be great no doubt <laughs> you know and like I said the, the the mothers that I've talked to want it in the afternoon if they can have some daylight they'd rather have it in the afternoon than in the morning so, so should we be contacting our senators and saying, please vote for I, this? Or, or if you don't, mm -hmm. don't vote for it? If, if you could, if you know House members, and I could give names, but I don't want to get people mad at me either. <laughs> but I just said the House members, this is where the bill is stalled out. Because, you know, what happened was we have a conference committee where you have three senators and you have three House members. And we had that conference committee, and it was wonderful. It was, we were done in less than 10 minutes. We signed off on it. Everything was good. And then I heard that, you know, they 
they said, we're not going to accept the conference committee report, so now it has to go back to conference committee. Okay, so, so we should contact our representatives. Our representatives, with our yeah. Opinions. Yeah, because the senators are on board. Before you, before we all get away from here, I want to ask about 1323. Mm -hmm. That was a pretty emotional bill. Yep. Went through the Senate, had a, a ton of um, support from the public. They all showed up in the gallery and yep. they were very emotional about it. And that's the bill it. about mandating masks. Correct. Yep. And now it's gone to the governor's desk. What are the chances we see a, a positive result there? Well, I think that if you contact the governor's office um, and we get a turnout like we did in the balcony of the Senate that day, I tell you what, I think that's the most people we've ever had in the balcony of the Senate, ever. And, uh, well, and that, right it was wonderful. Yeah. But the one thing I was going to tell you also is, I mean, people always say, we want local control. We want local control. Now, if there's a problem, we have a state health officer or we have the governor, they can call your mayor. They can say, hey, we've got a problem and you need to do this. And they can have a city council meeting in emergency one and people can come. But the, the beauty of it is you know who your mayor is, you know who your county commissioners are, you know where they live, you know what their phone numbers are. I mean, how many people could take even a picture? If we took three pictures right. and said, which one is a state health officer, would you be able to tell who that is? We wouldn't. But well, that's really no, great. but we know how to contact them, and we'll do that. Thank you, Senator yeah. Hyde Camp, for being on today. Yeah. And um, anytime you need me to come back, well, I am you. excited. We may do awesome. that. We'll talk talk again. Yeah. So thank you for joining us today on Ladies of Another View on Beck. <laughs>